what can you find waiting for you at Starbucks? A line. And today we'll be talking about points, lines, and planes. And for this particular video, naming them. So basically when we start geometry, we talk about the three big undefined terms. These are used to build all the other things we have in geometry. And the three things are a point, so a little point, a line, and a plane. So what is a point? A point is something that tells you where it is. It really names location. And they don't really have size. They have, zero, they have zero dimensions. They have no height, no length, and no width. Points are named using a single capital letter. So J is a point, K is. All of these next to the blue points or dots, those are all points. This little b here is not a capital letter. So that is not naming a point. So for our example, Name a point in the picture at right that is not on any of the segments or lines. Well, that would only be point D. So now we take a look at lines. These are straight paths which extend forever. And by the way, when we say line in geometry, we automatically mean a straight line. We don't mean a wavy line or a zigzaggy line. It's automatically the straight and it's the shortest path. They connect any two points on that line with the shortest path. If it's not the shortest path, it's not a line. The crazy thing about lines is we talk about how it measures the shortest path, but we cannot measure their length because they go on forever. The length is infinite. And lines are one dimensional. Now you might be tempted to say, wait a second, they go in two different directions. Well, that direction is all in the x dimension. The easy way to think about it is lines, if we could measure it, they do have length, but we can't measure it. So that's the dimension. They are missing the width and the height dimensions. So how do we name a line? Well, we can, if you were looking here, what do you think you could use to name the lines? You could say, well, I could do E, F, G, H, but couldn't, remember we said that a line is the two shortest, um, the shortest path between two points. So if I use any two points on that line, then that is good enough. And that is how we do name a line. We just use two of the points. And the way we write it is we write two capital letters for the points with a bar with double arrows. So that means arrows on each end. Order for a line does not matter. So you can say FG or GF, all right? And also it can also be named using a single italic lowercase letter that represents the line instead of a point. Remember this lowercase b we were talking about. That is actually the name for this line. So there are many different names for this line. And as an example, I'll have you give a few more. So we have EH is possible for this. You could say B, and you'd say line B. Or you could have EF, EG, GH. Why don't you go ahead and name a few more? Now, segments are pieces of lines. They definitely have finite lengths. Finite means it stops. It's measurable. They are defined using the two points at each end of the segment. So you want the last point and the first point. And the segment is named by writing the two end points, that should be an S, with a bar over both letters. There are no arrows because the arrows signify going on forever. Order doesn't matter. So if we leave off the bar with, um, and if we leave off the bar with a double arrow, then we're actually referring to the length of the segment. So in our example, we're going to give another name for this segment uh, it's called KJ here, and the other possible name is JK. Notice no arrows, two points, two capital letters. Now, Ray is part of a line that has only one endpoint and extends forever in one direction. So you can see here's the endpoint, and it goes forever in this direction. 
It is one dimensional and has infinite length because we just said it goes forever. Now, um, order does matter in, uh, when naming array because it doesn't go in both directions. It just goes in one direction. So first what we do is we write down the capital letter representing the end point on the array. Then we write down any other point that's off in the direction we're trying to represent. We put a bar over both letters and an arrow for the direction letter. So we always start with the end point and then the direction point. Uh, then we have the bar and the arrow. The arrow's always over the right. So for this ray here is ST or TS the correct name for the ray in the figure above. And I would say that it is TS because we have to start with the endpoint. I know it's on the right here, but that's where the ray starts. Now opposite rays are two rays that share the same endpoint, but point in opposite directions. And the cool thing is you can put two of them together and they will always make a line with no overlapping. So in our example, we're looking at the opposite ray to FE. Well, there's actually a couple of different answers. We could say it has to have the same endpoint, so it has to start with F, and it's going in this direction. I have two letters, that, uh, two points over here that help me with that. So I actually have two possible answers. FG, see the arrow on the right, or FH, also the arrow over the H. On your own, why don't you give another pair of opposite rays on EH? I would recommend that you don't use F as your endpoint. Try it. I'll give you a hint. Use G.